All right. So uh, another good old video from the drinker and uh, says a death, the death of girl boss. And uh, we shall see. We shall see. Uh, Madam Web did not do good at all. Echo sucked ass. The Marvel sucked ass. She Hulk sucked ass. And none of them has nice ass, unfortunately. None of them do. Unless you're Sydney Sweetney. But even Sydney Sweetney cannot save Madam Web. So let's see what the drinker has to say about this. Now, I believe it was Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Unfortunately, it doesn't work quite the same way in the world of corporate entertainment, where the rule would be better described as, for every 50 or so actions, there's an extremely belated and insufficient reaction. A good example of this would be the disastrous series of flops we've seen over the past year or two. Projects like Rings of Power, Peter Pan and Wendy, Ahsoka, She-Hulk, Resident Evil, Rob Robin Hood, The Witcher, <laughs> The Marvels, and most recently, Madam Web. Yep. Why did you say that? <laughs> I mean, let's be here, that was a movie that anyone with more brain cells than me after six pints of Skull Splitter knew was going to be a massive flop, despite having an opening weekend almost as long as its entire theatrical run if it carries on at this pace. I love this quote from The Hollywood Reporter from a North American distributor. On Wednesday night, you could actually watch advanced ticket sales declining in real time as buyers were refunding their tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me let me see. Let me actually check right now what the freaking box office is for that one. All right, check. Give me a second. Um, the numbers. All right, let's go. We're doing it live, boys. We're doing it live. All right, see, uh, Madam Web. <laughs> oh man <clears throat> oh man oh ooh, 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 not good not good damn what was the actual oh <laughs> how much did it take the production budget of 80 million only made 50 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Holy shit. Well, here's the thing. If they never said that, oh, uh, this movie actually isn't going to be a part of the Spider-Man universe. It's actually not going to be a part of the MCU. So, uh, lick my ass. So, basically, when they said that, they screwed themselves in the dick. They completely just ruined themselves just by saying that. If they never said it, people will be asking it's like oh is it or is it not is it or is it not but they came out and straight up said oh this is his own spider a uh, sony spider verse kind of thing so it doesn't have to do anything with the mcu i'm like well no one's gonna freaking care no yeah yeah man pepsi please save us nope this movie died from high fructose corn syrup <laughs> oh man oh shit dude all right let's uh let's con let's continue <laughs> It really says something when you'd rather have Shazam 2 numbers. The point is that when a big flop like this happens, the access media tends to scramble to find a convenient and politically acceptable excuse. But in this case, The Hollywood Reporter seems to have made an admission about the film's target audience that I don't think anyone expected. Quote, I don't know if women are enough to carry the box office here, one veteran studio source outside of Sony says. Indeed, males make up 65 to 70 percent of the superhero audience in North America. True, in the true, case true. Of Madam Web, the percentage of female viewers was still only 46 percent. Now pay attention, 007, because this one's important. Madam Web was a superhero movie specifically designed to appeal to a female audience. It's got a female lead, a trio of female supporting characters, a female director and a female led writing team okay i'm not saying that if it's an all female cast including the people who are working on the film like the directors and writing i'm not saying that it can't be good but the thing is that whose fucking bright idea was it to not have them in their superhero outfits other than in a flashback or, or, or a premonition like whose fucking idea was that like whoever made that decision needs to not be working anymore right i would say this person needs to get hired at mcdonald's and then immediately get replaced by a robot <laughs> it's like i watched that movie with gray for project egg roll it's so bad it's wasted two hours of my life 
Like, holy crap, man. And you have Chris Duckman who was like, I know how hard is it to make a movie. So um, it's not the fault of the directors. It's actually Sony's fault, actually. So um, uh, I'm not going to make a review about it because I don't want to be bashing movies. I just want to be celebrating. In- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's continue. And guess what? None of it helped. Women didn't turn out to see it. Not in the numbers they needed anyway. It was the same problem with the Marvels. That film had three female leads, a female director, and an all-female writing team. And what happened to it? The male audience was put off by a movie that did everything except ban them from attending screenings. The much-anticipated female audience failed to show up. And as a result, it was the biggest box office flop in MCU history. So tell me, what exactly did these two movies have in common? That's right, they both tried to pander to an audience that was never going to see them in the first place. Yep. You know, it's actually kind of funny reading articles from mainstream outlets that cover stuff like this because it's like watching someone with an almost complete jigsaw puzzle who simply refuses to put the final piece into place because they don't like the picture that it forms. Well, if they won't do it, then I'll have to do it for them. Because here's an inconvenient truth, dear viewer. Men and women tend to be interested in different things. Wow, who? Who would have thought, huh? Who would have thought? You know, uh, back in the day, superhero films were mostly made for men. When I say mostly, I'm saying all of it was made for men. I remember when I was with my ex and I saw the Iron Man trailer. I'm like, I'm going to go watch that movie. That looks good. And she looks at me and says, you're going you're going to be going by yourself. And then I dragged her along and she's like, this movie's pretty fucking freaking good, man. And then every movie after that, when I say I want to go watch it, we go watch it together. Do you know why? It's because it has something for the girls, too. Now, these movies that are made for women has nothing for guys. Nothing. Did we see any cleavage with uh, Sydney Sweetney? No. Did we see any upskirts with Sydney Sweetney? No. Did we see any pokies with Sydney Sweetney? No. We got nothing. We got nothing. <laughs> I know it's truly an earth shattering revelation, but there it is. In fact, if you care to break down the box office statistics by gender, you'll find that women make up 85% of audiences for romance movies and 70% for musicals. Men, on the other hand, make up 70% of the audience for superhero movies, there it is. 75% for action movies, and 65% for science fiction and fantasy. There In it fact, is. This nifty little graphic from the British Film Institute breaks down the preferred genres for men and women. Okay, let me see. Young female skew, romance is high. Young male skew, horror. Where do they all converge? Where does this Venn diagram all uh, con- converge? Right over here, where it says um, comedy and the action comedy. Looks like action, action a little bit comedy, a uh, little bit documentary. Yeah, everything is sort of right over here. Biopic, thriller, crime, war history, political, horror, fantasy. And where's porn? I don't see porn. Well, I, I, clearly this list is not for me. <laughs> And you can clearly see the difference in preference between them. That's not a good or a bad thing, but it is a thing that movie studios should pay attention to. Instead, they've been doing the exact opposite in recent years. They seem to regard audience demographics as a problem that needs to be fixed, instead of the inevitable result of different groups. I talk of about this all the time, interests. dude. And the thing is, their solution has produced the worst possible outcome for everyone. In the case of the big box office franchises like Marvel, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, and others, which now naturally tend to skew towards a male audience, they made a conscious decision to tell more stories with female leads. A lot more. There's oh nothing wrong with that yep. on the face of it, but True. whether or not it works all comes down to implementation. Instead of writing likable and distinctly feminine characters that complemented the existing male ones, the writers and creatives treated it more like a competition that only one side was ever allowed to win. Like, I, I remember I was on Twitter, and a uh, Twitter X, and there's this person who was like, besides Ripley, Name another female character that you like that's well written. Um, well, a female character that you like in general. Not that. So a lot of people are like, well, Sarah Connor is one of them. That's really, really well written. Jill Valentine, Claire Redfield. Like, there's so many good characters. Wonder Woman, 
right? And then even Marge Simpson is on that list, right? So it's it's so stupid how these people are like, oh, you just don't like the movie because there's a female in it. Uh, then just don't watch it then. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Like, all right, cool. We're not going to fucking watch it. And then what happened? The movie bombs. And then, oh, the reason why the movie bombs is because of your freaking male. <laughs> Russia has banned Pornhub? Man, sad sad day for Russians, man. Sad day. <laughs> a story about a female protagonist learning to free herself from the oppressive demands of others and discover her true potential is a perfectly viable story to tell. The problems creep in when that becomes the only story that you ever tell. And their standard practice of lazily taking stereotypical male traits and pouring them straight into female characters failed to win anyone over. Men were generally put off by the new crop of overbearing, aggressive, infallible girl bosses who seemed to exist purely to show off and humiliate their male counterparts at every opportunity. Yep. While women failed to connect with them either because they represented masculine ideals that didn't come naturally to them in a genre that most of them didn't particularly care for anyway. In short, Hollywood's wasted billions of dollars chasing an audience that doesn't exist. And in the process, they've gradually pushed away the one that did. On the flip side, look at what happens when you actually understand your target audience and make a film that caters specifically to them. Barbie was the biggest hit of 2023, and even if I personally didn't like it, that doesn't matter one bit because it wasn't made for me. It was a movie written and directed specifically for women. Everything from its aesthetics to its dialogue to its themes and messaging were designed to appeal to female audiences, and it worked big time. Yep. I didn't watch that movie. I did, I did not watch Barbie. I heard it. a lot of people watched it. A lot of people liked it. It wasn't a movie for me, but it still made a billion dollars. Do you know why? Because all the females showed up. All the females showed up. Top Gun Maverick made a billion dollars. Do you know why? Because all the males showed up. And all the males dragged their females, uh, female friends there. And plus you get like, it's a good movie. It's a fucking good movie. So the thing is that why did Cap uh, the Marvels and uh, Madam Web didn't do well? Because the, those movies were not catered towards men. It wasn't made for you. Right? A Wrinkle in Time wasn't made for 40 year old uh, white men. It was made for a se uh, seven year old girls, right? Well, the reason why that movie failed was because seven year old girls didn't show up. Their parents didn't bring them there. Madam Web sucked. It's because the females didn't show up. The Marvel sucked because the females didn't show up. So stop blaming men. Blame the woman. The reason why these movies fail is because of you, women. Go watch your movie. If if we didn't watch it because we didn't want to, because we know it's gonna suck. And oh yeah, and it's not for me. It's it's not for me. That's why it's not, it wasn't made for me, right? Uh, white adjacent straight man. It's not white. It's not made for me. Top Gun Maverick, on the other hand, was aimed primarily at men because it incorporates so many of the masculine tropes and themes that men traditionally. Asa Akira sucked because she sucked the men. find appealing action and explosions advanced technology fighter jets militarism macho conflict and competition both of these films achieved massive success because they understood their core audience and how to appeal to them now imagine how detrimental it would have been if the studios tried to incorporate elements that appeal to the opposite gender like if barbie's colorful exploration of female identity empowerment and self-actualization was interrupted by big macho action scenes with guns and explosions and technology porn or top Gun Maverick devoted lengthy sequences to a female pilot lamenting how difficult it is to gain respect in a male-dominated profession while maintaining her sense of feminine identity and her aspirations for marriage and family. In both cases, the core target audience would probably have rolled their eyes and thought, why do they have to inject this crap into my movie and totally spoil the fun? Well, congratulations, now you know how it feels to be a fan of any of the big franchises over the past decade or so. The thing is, I think the message is finally starting to sink in with the good people of Hollywood. 
Hollywood's maybe Let's not hope. the creatives, but Let's definitely hope. the soulless money men paying their salaries who've spent the past several years watching their profit margins slowly fall off a cliff. Like I said earlier, for every 50 or so actions, there's a belated reaction from Hollywood, and it's finally starting to happen now. The first domino to fall is Silk Spider Society. Yes, we talked about this one. Spider-Man spin-off in development at Amazon Prime. According to the press releases, the entire writing team's been fired, and the show is being refocused with a more male skewing audience in mind. That means we're gonna get big titties and big asses. Oh man. Coomers rise up. Our time is now. Cultured people in the chat room. Our time is now. Coomers are gonna be cooming all day. All day. Now, this might not sound like much of a big deal, but it is. Because it's the first time that a studio had the balls to publicly declare that they're targeting a project towards a male audience again. In 2024, that's the equivalent of a vegan restaurant saying that their new menu is going to cater towards meat eaters. <laughs> it's the first time that anyone in Hollywood's openly admitted that what they've been pushing on us for the past decade or so just isn't working, no matter how much money they throw at it. That you can't make every movie appeal to every person. That trying to attract female audiences into a male dominated genre with clumsy pandering doesn't work and never will work. In the words of Nerdrotic, all they're doing is taking boy brands that everyone could enjoy and turning them into girl brands that no one enjoys. True. So what exactly can we expect now that the pendulum's starting to swing the other way? And more importantly, what do we want to see moving forwards? Tits! Well, believe it or not, uh, yeah, I sorry, think sorry. Their approach needs Good to writing. That Good writing. They want to win back old fans and restore a bit of balance. Franchises like Marvel, Star Wars, DC, and Star Trek can still have plenty of kick-ass female heroes going on exciting adventures they just need to be written more like actual human beings with believable flaws and weaknesses and challenges to overcome instead of overbearing obnoxious power fantasies that nobody can identify with and they need to be balanced out by equally strong and capable male heroes that appeal to male audiences because believe it or not those are the driving force behind your box office revenue they need characters who can actually challenge and push them to be better who don't automatically give way to them at the slightest sign of conflict instead of the neutered lumps of wet lettuce that we've been getting who are wet, always portrayed as less lettuce. smart, less skilled, less confident, and, well, just less in general. And yeah, after almost a decade of trying to make it work... See, I didn't watch this movie, but man, what a wasted opportunity for freaking uh, uh, Christian Bale, man. What a waste of talent, man, putting him in freaking Love and Thunder. Man! That sucks, man. He went from Batman to this old decrepit man. <laughs> oh, man. Work, I think it's about time to accept that the great experiment has been a complete failure. You're not going to get equal numbers of women to watch science fiction or action or superhero movies, just like you're not going to get equal numbers of men to watch romance flicks or musicals. The girl boss concept is dead yes you might not like it, but your sorry. audience sorry. is your audience all the same and if you don't start catering to them you might just find that they no longer exist and perhaps neither will you anyway that's all i've got for today go away now man good video man but man that made me happy because like is Hollywood actually finally getting the gist? Or they'd be like, oh man, uh, 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 if, the, if the fans don't like it, it's because it's men's fault and their fucking penises. Uh, 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 uh. Shut the hell up, man. God, what a good video. I'm going to share it. Share it. Go ahead and give that. Give the drinker. Always, always a good video. Every time you watch him, always good. Dick is usually very hard after watching it. So go ahead and give him uh follow and share and stuff like that i'm gonna share this video go ahead yeah go ahead and give him a like he 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 needs all the support that he can because he's a he's an up and coming youtuber he's an up and coming youtuber and he needs all the help he, uh he 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 can get chat room <laughs> he needs all the help he can get because he's uh the small he's the smallest youtuber i know so yeah go 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 and give him a follow